long, long time ago. Two thousand years I see my Savior died for me. Father, we are thankful to be in thy house, O God. It's good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. O Lord, how we need you more every day than we live. Make this a house of worship today. Even open our minds unto you, O God. Even the churches everywhere, let your blessing be there, O God. Teach us thy ways and truths, and we'll thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be in God's house today. Praise the Lord. We want to sing and, and get... Our worship go with Judy. Come and lead us and sing.
six hours out on light sea, so burdened with sin and distress. Till I heard her sweet voice say, Make your choice, and I entered the kingdom of bread.
He put some flowers on the hill And my cup he gladly filled How can they turn around and say God is dead
Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we're, we're in tough times right now. But if going to get tough, you know, the tough get going. You know that, don't you? Amen. I'm tired of hearing people cry and whine and carry on. Now we need to we need to lift him up. We're gonna we're gonna win this thing. We're on top of this thing. Can you say amen? We can prosper in hard times, amen. We can be blessed in hard times. It don't matter what the world's doing, we're gonna be blessed. But he said we're gonna be blessed above all the people that's on the face of the earth. Come on now. Don't look glum and sad. It's a good day to be living in, hallelujah. A lot of people are hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry. My dad used to sing a song, I'm homesick for, for uh, something, and he said, but I have no home. Must be, he said, I'm homesick for heaven. I'm homesick wherever I roam. I got a longing for somebody somewhere. Nothing ever satisfies me. I got a homesick feeling down deep in my heart, and it's Jesus I'm longing to see. Amen. I got a longing to see Jesus. I don't know about you, but I do. Amen. And I'm looking for him. I, and I'm looking for him in the land of the living. Yeah. Amen. He's alive and well. Amen. We sing the song, God is not dead. He ain't even sick. <laughs> Amen. He, he's not even listening. He's bent down. Hallelujah. He's in full control. Uh, and he's got all power in heaven and earth. Can you say amen? Yeah. He's got it all. That means there ain't nothing left outside of what he's got. Amen. He's got it all. He's got all the power. Amen. I love him tonight. I feel, I feel that power here tonight. I do feel the love. I feel the joy of the Lord. It is my strength, children. Amen. Lift up the heavy hands and hang down. Can you just raise your hand in the congregation right now? I worry when you ask people to raise their hand and they do that. I mean raise your hand. I will raise my hand in the congregation. It's an evening sacrifice to the Lord. Say, well, I don't feel like it. That's what makes it a sacrifice. It wouldn't be a sacrifice if you always felt like it. You don't have to feel like it. You've got a right to raise your hand to the Lord. It's special to God. Did you know that? It's a special thing unto God. Don't worry about how it looks or what somebody will say. And it just lays your hands unto God. Hallelujah. It's pleasing to God. Praise you, Amen. Well, Please, the God. Oh, blessed be the name Amen. of the Lord. I couldn't always hold my hands up like this. No. One time I was bound, I didn't even have the freedom to raise my hand. They said, raise my hands, I hold up tighter to the seat. They said, raise your hands. And sometimes I might get it up about like that. There. About <laughs> how I can get it. But thank God I'll pray tonight. Not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It's real tonight. It's real. I know it's real. That Pentecostal blessing. I know. I know it's real. Hallelujah. Amen. God is real tonight. His word is true. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I've laid on my bed of meditation today, the Lord spoke to my heart. The 121st Psalm. You turn with me. And I'm not going to keep you long. We've had a lot of good singing. And a lot of good things have been said and done here tonight. God has already shown himself, but we don't want to bring the word forth because it's in this word that we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. This just kept going over and over in my mind today. And I thought about how many, uh, so many people look to so many things. But what we need to do is look unto him. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We find ourselves looking down. There's nothing down here. There's no need looking around down here. I tried this down here. There ain't nothing down here. Amen. We got to look up. Look up. Look up for your redemption. Draw nigh. Look to the hills from which cometh our help. We have to look to a higher thing. Something that's above where we are. Can you say amen? amen. Children, some of you are going to have to start looking up and quit looking down. All right. Amen. I told a, a lady just the other day I was praying for her. As Sister Daisy was talking about how they sit alone in these houses with their, with no no music playing, just sitting and listening to the, the clock tick, tick, tock, tick, or the creaking of the house, or whatever storm's going on outside, and they sit by the hour like that. And the Satan gets in their mind and lies. So you know he's a liar. You realize that, don't you? He's a liar. He's never told a lost man that he's lost. He'll say, you're all right. You don't have to go to church. That people's crazy. You don't have to go to church. He'll lie to you. And he'll, he'll say, you, you don't need that. And then when you get saved and you know you're saved, he'll say, you didn't get it. 
You're not saved. All the rest of the people are saved, but you're a phony. When you get alone, these kind of thoughts come to you. While these people are there, if they knew what you really was down in your heart, they wouldn't even have fellowship with you. See, they don't really know you. If they knew you, they wouldn't like you very well. He's a liar. See, he says these things. He's a liar. Children. He couldn't tell the truth. So if he's telling you these things, you know you're saved. Thank God I know I'm saved. And I know what Satan told me I was lost, so I must be saved. He told me I'm lost, so I must be all right. Because he's a liar. He cannot tell the truth. And too many people listen to the wrong voices. So when we get into closer ears, that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I, I, I just pack one around and just have clamber all down my... <laughs> I just go right on the preacher. Don't bother me a bit. Praise the Lord. I love the sound of babies. It ain't no problem. But I'm glad, children of God, that God knows how to bless. I will, he said, lift up mine eyes unto the hill. You know, people, they'll, they'll run to the doctor and they'll run to the psychiatrist or, or the psychologist. And all these things have their place. You understand? I'm not going to, I'm going to, what do you think? I'm preaching against him. But they'll run to everything. They'll, they'll get, take all the medicine down on the shelf. And the last thing to do when they can't seem to get any help oh is they'll finally let somebody pray for them. Amen. Somebody somewhere will have a, a prayer line going and they'll run up. And by that time, they're ready for anybody to lay hands on. They don't care what they look like or who they are. If they're a preacher or a jack leg, a saint, or, or a ain't, or a, they never has been, or, or a has been, or never has been, they don't care. They just want help. And I wonder why the first thing we don't turn to is the law. Because Satan will lie to you and he'll say, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. I know how to go up there and let them pray for me, but I don't feel worthy. I got news for you. There's nobody worthy in the house. There's not a worthy one among us, children of God. For we're all unworthy, especially in the sight of the world, in the sight of the devil. and our own place, we're unworthy. But he made me worthy, the song said. He made me worthy. We know how unworthy we are, don't we? One of my favorite songs, unworthy am I of the grace that he gave. Unworthy to hold to his hand. Amazed that a king would reach down to a slave. Such love I cannot understand. That's a beautiful song, and I understand that song. Unworthy, I'm so unworthy. Hallelujah. But he made me worthy. And now by his grace. His mercy has made me His own. Isn't that a great song? It's a true song, children of God. Praise the Lord. God is good tonight. Amen. He wants to help somebody tonight. He wants to touch somebody's life tonight. Don't hold back from God. Amen. When God is calling you, Hank Williams used to sing a song, calling you, calling you. Amen. There's a voice calling you. Praise the Lord. Don't turn that voice away. Don't turn away from that the voice of God that's wooing and calling you. You've got a right to kneel down before God and pray. Did you know that? Amen. Uh, well, they'll think I've done something bad. It don't matter what anybody thinks. When he calls you, and some of you have been trying to get back and trying to get back, but you still haven't surrendered. Somewhere you've got to surrender. You've got to quit worrying about what anybody thinks about how long has it been, Sister Bobby sings a song, yeah. since you had a snotty nose blessing? Yeah. How long has it been since your hair was matted against your face? How long has it been since you shook your body pins down and your hair do come down? How long has it been since you really got beside yourself and really let God move in your life? He wants to refresh you. He wants to bless you. He wants to come into you. He wants to shake your tree. Did you know that? God wants to shake your tree. God wants to shake your tree. And some come to see the show. The used to come to see the Pat Davis show, but it ain't, uh, it ain't, uh, it's not so hot anymore. But uh, it used to be. You never knew what I was going to do. One night I laid here on my back, just kicked my legs and, and laughed. And a laughing spirit on me, and I laid on, I don't know how long I laid there, and kicked my legs and laughed. That was the old days. I didn't have a lot of sense back in the days. And uh, I, last, I, still, I still get carried away. But I have a hard time getting up and down, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, but I'm not above it now. I'm not above it. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to it to get their tree shook. Amen. All right. You call people in order prayer, and they'll come and kneel down 
kneel one knee down <laughs> and then get a hand up like this. Mumble a little bit, get up and go away. Amen. Oh Jesus. Amen. We need to get our tree shook. We need the wind of the Holy Ghost blowing through our hair a little bit. Woo! Hallelujah. We need to feel the presence and the power of God. Amen. We shouldn't let go until He blesses you. God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. And we shouldn't let go until He blesses you. Lord, I will not let go until you bless me. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to get that mindset. Amen. And I watch people. Amen. I, I was talking to a man one time in this church. He's dead now. In fact, I preached his funeral, as I have a lot of them. And he said to me, Brother Pat, God delivered me one time. And he told me what all God delivered him from. And he said, I went back on the Lord, crucified the Lord afresh. And I've been trying to get back all these years. And he said, I can't seem to get back. And sometimes people don't never get back. Because they never fully surrender. Uh -huh. And when God forgives, forgive. they can't forgive themselves. God up. forgives, but they cannot accept His forgiveness a second time. Hello there. You know what I'm talking about? We got church fills of people like this. Uh -huh. And they want to feel, oh, if I can just feel what I once felt. You can, believe me, you can. Yeah. You can go beyond. I remember one time I thought my ministry was all gone. I thought I'd done blew it. It was plumb out the window. And back there I had a great ministry. But I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge, but I had a lot of zeal. I kicked around and screamed a lot, made a lot of noise, beat my guitar, and jumped and hollered and carried on. And it was good for that time, because that's all I knew. I can't, you can't preach anymore what you know. Yeah. You know. But through the years and through my struggle and through my restoration, Thank God I know a few things about God today. It's not just a, a you know, a, a, a zeal without any knowledge. But I've got some knowledge and I can promise you some things. I know what God can and will do for you if you'll surrender to Him. Somewhere you've got to surrender. Yes. Somewhere you got to say, I give up, Lord. I give it all to you. I'm giving it all to you. Brother Ricky Klaus used to tell, he said, I leave my drugs on the altar. And I go out and I pick them right back up. I leave my cigarettes on the altar. But he said, one day I laid Ricky Klaus on that altar. <laughs> and God worked a miracle in my life. Some of you need to lay yourself on God's altar. I'm talking about your whole self, inside and out, spiritually and naturally, and every which way you need to lay yourself on that altar. You need to get your eyes off situations, eyes off other people, and just look to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I can't help what others do, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve you. Children, somewhere you've got to do that. But you'll be fighting. And so I just can't seem to get back where I was. And this brother said that to me. And I don't know that he ever did. But every time I talked to him, he'd say, I can't seem to get back to where I was. I said, I want you to know something. You can get back. Yes, you can. You're looking at one thought, I could never get back. But you can get back. Amen. Amen. You can find that grace That'll for your up. heart. Amen. It's real tonight. It's a real thing. I pray tonight that somewhere along the line, some of you will kneel down and just offer yourself to God. It is not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. It's not a hard thing. Amen. And you might be surprised that load that you've been carrying so long, if you just lay it down, you might be surprised how easy it is. I, I love that song Don Williams sings. I call it, uh, Lord, I hope my day is good. You ever hear that song? He talks about, I hope my day is good. And he said, Lord, this will be hard for the devil to do, but this will be easy for you. I love that song. And Don Williams is a really good Christian man. He loves God with all of his heart. And I love to hear him sing. It would be hard for the devil to do, but Lord, this would be easy for you. Oh, Lord, I hope my day is good. You can leave here and say, boy, this has been a good day. <laughs> Hallelujah. I went to church one night. You ever heard that song? I went there to fight. But oh my, that night, something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. I went there to visit. I wanted to see Sister Betty's new church. Sister Betty was one of my favorite uh, uh, cousins, you know. And so I wanted to go see her new church. And so I just went down. In fact, I didn't even have any clothes. I had to borrow some clothes. All of a sudden, the other, one of the other brothers in the house to go. But I went there that night. 
And I sure didn't intend to surrender. But something got a hold of my heart. Oh, something got a hold of my heart that night and drew me to God. Oh, I would that something would get a hold of your heart tonight. I would that somebody, amen, would hear the voice of God. I tell you what, I'd throw the program away. I just, I just wouldn't even worry about doing another thing. If somebody would just obey the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I threw my guitar down and I jumped up and I, and I began to go to the altar. And as I went, I ended up dancing my way to the altar. And I fell in that altar and God filled me with the Holy Ghost even before I hit, the, hit my on my knees. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. It was so easy. I thought it was going to be a hard thing and God filled me. It was so easy. And there was a shaking and there was a spitting on me and I pulling my hair and all those things Pentecostals do, you know. Little snotting and a blower they used to. They're not quite that bad anymore. Nobody gets that excited anymore. But they used to and they'd stay with you till the cows come home. Oh, yeah. And they shook me and they shook me and pretty soon I started speaking in tongues again and they said, that's it, honey, that's it. I said, well, I had that while ago. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. This is like when you buy a pair of shoes, the tongues come with it. You don't have to make a big issue out of the shoe. Get the Holy Ghost, tongues come with it. Amen. Amen. Maybe they ain't spoke out of yet, but it's in there. Don't worry about it. Amen. Amen. It comes with it. It's all part of the package. Amen. If you just yield a little bit, he's as close as a breath is to your nostrils. Amen. He's right there. He's not a million miles away. He's right near yeah. to you. Amen. And he'll fill you and refresh you and thrill your soul and cause you to experience something that you've never experienced yet. Wouldn't you like to see somebody receive the Holy Ghost tonight? You're in here tonight. One time I went to a revival with Sister Betty down to Bird's Eye, Indiana. And uh, Sister Brady's living down there, Bird's Eye. We would do that. Sister Betty told me, said, as we went down there, you know, she said, it's been about uh, 15 years ago I held a revival down here. And there was a man who said he'd been tearing for the Holy Ghost for 20 years. And she said, Sir, you know the Holy Ghost was given on the day of Pentecost. And all you got to do is believe it and receive it. So why don't you come up here? And he come up here and she laid hands on him said, Receive the Holy Ghost. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he danced and shouted and spoke a tongue all over that church. I said, well, I hope he's there. I hope we get we can talk about that when we get there. And she got up that night and she began to, and, and him and his family was there. Their name was Bailey's. I remember very well. Later years, when I went to Brother Milby's church on uh, South Meridian Street, little mission down on South Meridian Street, I got to meet those Bailey people. They were with Brother Milby at that time. And anyway, she began to, to talk about that testimony that night. And so somebody in the audience said, well, I've been seeking the Holy Ghost uh, for several years. If God did that for him, why can't he do it for me? She said, he can do it for you. Come on up here. And she came up and he laid hands on, on him. She laid hands on him and he received the Holy Ghost. Just like that. Amen. And I was telling my son-in-law, Ricky, pastor the church down in Manchester, Tennessee, about that. And he said, well, if God do that for them, why wouldn't he do that for us? And so he got up and began to preach us, and he was retelling it, and someone jumped up and said, okay, God, tell me the Holy Ghost. Sure, he's the same God. And they come up there and fill it, uh, fill him with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about almost 50 years later. This time. Oh, man, tell me God ain't good. God is good. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And wherever he can find people to believe him, he will perform his wonders. Hallelujah. Our God is good tonight. Yes, he is. Amen. I could go on and on with this. Let me read just a little bit more and I'm going to let you go here. My help cometh from the Lord. That's the first thing you've got to understand. Amen. Yeah. You know, you might have a good job, but you only got that because the Lord allowed you to have it, right? Yeah. And He works through that job. He can make that job a blessing yes, or that can. job can be a curse and if God's not in there. Amen. I've seen people with good jobs that just despise because uh -huh. God's not in it. But if God's in it, it can be a blessing. Me and Daisy bought a house one time, and at the time we bought it, we was renting a, we lived in an apartment. And we couldn't afford to buy a house. And it was coming as dumped in my lap. It was I got such a deal on it, I just felt like I needed it if I turned it down. 
And so he bought it, and I'm going to tell you, it, it ended up one of the greatest things that I ever, it was a tool that God allowed me to use. Yeah. You know, it was just a blessing. I, I sold it several times for $1,000 down and, and so much a month. And every time I need, need a thousand, just about. But, but, and, and, and God just blessed us with that house. We, we refinanced it. And, and it was just a blessing. Oh, from beginning to end, my uh, days of ex husband lived in that house for a good long while. And, and, and my uh, daughter, Tammy, lived in that house. And it was a blessing. It was just from beginning to end that God allowed us to get. And at the time I got that house, there was no way I could get that house. But God just made it possible. See, God makes impossible things possible. Yes, That's what God does. He works miracles if you can trust Him and believe Him. I wonder why I'm not buying this place. And I, you know, we didn't have to do a whole lot to it, and and uh, just go and collect the rent and when we could. Sometimes we couldn't. We got beat several times out of rent, but but the place paid for itself, and uh, and it, it was a blessing. And that's what God can do. He can make things a blessing. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Amen. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. Right. He's always awake. Amen. You are his concern. Amen. Amen. Above all the people on the face of the earth, you as a part of, body, uh, part of the body of Christ are his concern. Job one is you with God. Hallelujah. He's got you in mind, Sister. Uh, Jennifer sang that song when I was on the when he was on the cross, I was on his oh, mind. Nice. A great, great song. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. That's an italicis. It means emphasize that. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Amen. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming Amen. in from this time forth and even forevermore. That's God's promise to you and me. But somewhere along the line, I don't care, you've got to surrender. I can almost remember the day that I surrendered to the Lord or the time in my life. I can't remember the hour or day, but I can remember the period of time in my life. I didn't have any security. I, 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 you know, I didn't know from one uh, church night to the next. If I was going to be, I was saved one night and lost the next night. I mean, I was in that situation. I was up and down and up and down and in and out. And I remember one time saying to the Lord, Lord, I can't live like this. I've got to have some security. And God secured me. And He settled me. And He strengthened me. And He brought peace to my life. But I surrendered to God that night. I said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. Amen. I'll go where you want me to go. Yeah. I'll say what you want me to say. Amen. I will not hold back. You will be number one in my life. I almost remember making that pledge. Children, it's the best thing that I ever did do. Yeah. Because God straightened out the curves in my life. Yeah. And He brought security to me. Yeah. And I have that security tonight. I'm not in misery. I'm happy serving the Lord. Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> You know, the little children say, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm happy, 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 happy. I'm happy. Amen. Don't try to make me sad, I'm happy. I love the Lord. I love serving God. I love living for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love the life that He's given me. Yeah. Brother Mac Smith used to stand in our congregation so I praise God for the life that He's given me. Yeah. He'll give you that life. I'm talking about a life of security. The security of the believer. It'll take you through operations. It'll take you through sick periods. It'll take you through storms. It'll take you through hard times. It'll take you through the valley of the shadow of death. And everybody's falling all around you. It'll cause you to be strong and just go, go through. God will allow you to go through. Can you say amen? But it takes a surrender. A surrender. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would surrender. I wish somebody would surrender unto the Lord. Wouldn't it be good? Amen. Don't you love to see people just get up and come to the Lord? Amen. Yes. You don't have to yes. beg Him. <clears throat> Amen. Just come to the Lord. Just, just come because they want to come. Hallelujah. Sometimes it surprises you who it is sometimes. Might be somebody you thought was really secure in the Lord. But there's a lot of people in church today that are not secure in the Lord. Amen. And you've got to surrender somewhere. The Bible said, every knee shall bow. Every knee. What do you think that's talking about? Maybe you bowed naturally, but 
Spiritually, you haven't really bowed. Uh -huh. You're going to bow. You're going to bow here. You're going to bow somewhere. Somewhere you're going to bow. Somewhere. Amen. I believe I bow here. Yeah. God's got blessings for you that you, you don't know anything about. You've heard them sing about it. Yeah. Heard them talking about it. You've heard them read about it, preach about it. But you really don't know about it because you haven't surrendered. Amen. Somewhere you've got to surrender. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I want to sing a, a, a verse or two of a song a brother of mine wrote. And uh, I, love the, I love the song. I always did love it. At one time it was really a special blessing in my life. And, and uh, the, the words to it are so, well, so good. And the song is called Grace Again. Some of you have heard me sing it before. I can't sing it like he can sing because it's his song. He wrote it. But said, our God will give you grace again. He understands a fall of man. Our God will give you grace again. Sometimes you may think I've went too far, I've done too much, but our God will give you grace again. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something, there's still a little tug at your heart, then you haven't gone too far. Sometimes you think you've gone too far. If there's a little life in there, if there's just a little, little coal in there, Amen. the Lord will fan it. The Bible says His fan is in His hand. Amen. Woohoo! Spark that fire. The Holy Ghost and fire up in the <laughs> 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 Oh, it'll come into play, won't it? God will blow on that spark until it comes to life again. It might be not near dead. It might just be just a, you know, it says a, a bruised reed he will not break. Brother Jerry came back to the Lord on this message right here. I preached this message here one time. A bruised reed he will not break. The smoking plaques he will not quench. I preached that one night and, and it just turned Jerry's life around. said, I'll never forget that message as long as I live. Right. But it was straight from God and it's true. Amen. A bruised reed, you may get pretty bruised up real bad, but God will not break you. Men would break you. They'd break you so you'd never get back. But see, God won't break a bruised reed. Amen. The smoking flax, he will not quench. His fan is in his hand. Come on, I know it was far there. Come on, I know it's about to come. Come on, come on, come on. You ever do that in front of the building? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You, you've never lived. You've never lived in a in a cold house on a cold morning. And all there are some coals there. And you throw a little wood and a few sticks down in there or something. And you're, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Ooh, makes you feel good. There he goes. There he Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get warm now. Get us a cup of coffee. Pull the chair up. Hallelujah. God wants to build that fire in you. Hallelujah. Brother Harry Kenny wrote this. Grace again. Grace again. Our God will give you. Grace 
and it still was you. Oh, she's coming to play with me. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. 